With Tony Stark and Peter Parker working together in the MCU, you can bet your favorite web shooter we're going to see some alternate costumes in these movies. Let's have a look at some alternate costumes that the real Peter Parker, aka the Peter Parker of the Marvel 616 universe, has actually worn. And why? Obviously, the first one is from Amazing Fantasy number 15 in 1962. This is the original Spider-Man costume, but the first one isn't really the one you remember. While the first one is technically on the cover, we actually see a proto Spider-Man costume that Peter Parker designs for wrestling. This one includes slacks, a white tank top, and a web mask. It would only be later in the issue that we would see the famous red and blues, which includes an underarm webbing and also some kind of dots in the white eye area. It's inconsistent within the issue, but I think it was only used for dramatic effect in the moment. We never see it again. After this, it's classic red and blues from here on out until Amazing Spider-Man number 100 in 1971, when we have the amazing six-armed Spider-Man, thanks to a genetic experiment that Peter Parker performed on himself to try and rid himself of his spider powers. Instead, he grew four additional limbs for his troubles. In Amazing Spider-Man number 113 in 1972, Dr. Octopus and Spider-Man fought and destroyed Spider-Man's mask, and he had to go into a costume shop and replace it. Unfortunately, as many of us know, the costume version is never really quite like the original, and in this case, it had eye holes cut out of the mask and a couple of other odd enhancements slash changes. In Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 40 in 1980, due to an experiment with Dr. Kirk Connors, aka the Lizard, Spider-Man became a half-man, half-lizard with enhanced spider powers. The Lizard portion took control of his body and began terrorizing New York City. Thankfully, Dr. Kirk Connors was able to manufacture an antidote. In Amazing Spider-Man 213 in 1981, Peter Parker attempted to wash his Spider-Man costume overnight in a solution that he created himself. When the suit emerged from the bath, it was washed out and looked pink. Typical Parker luck. In Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 66 in 1982, Peter Parker fashioned an anti-electro suit made of an old air mattress, which would protect him from Electro's electricity powers. In 1984, most of Earth's Mightiest Heroes were kidnapped and taken to a far-off planet called Battleworld. It was there that Spider-Man and his comrades were forced to battle some of Earth's greatest villains. And in Secret Wars number 8, mistaking one piece of alien technology for another, Spider-Man discovered an alien costume which responded to his thoughts and commands. In Amazing Spider-Man 258 in 1984, Peter Parker discovered the alien costume was actually an alien symbol that wished to bond with him permanently. In the home of the Fantastic Four, they used a sonic gun to remove the costume and trap it, but it left Peter Parker kind of naked and afraid. Thanks to some quick thinking on the Human Torch's part, Spider-Man was given an old Fantastic Four uniform and a bag to put over his head, and for good measure there was also a Kick Me sign on his back. He returned to the classic red and blues until Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 99 in 1985, when his girlfriend at the time, Black Cat, offered him a threaded version of the black costume, claiming it was much more sexy than the red and blues. In Spider-Man vs. Wolverine in 1987, Peter Parker found himself in Germany and without a costume. Not learning his lesson about aftermarket Spider-Man costumes, he picked one up which actually said "Das Spine on the back, which in German translates to the spider. In 1990, Peter Parker was imbued with the awesome and seemingly limitless power of Captain Universe, but it wasn't until Amazing Spider-Man 329 when he actually changed his costume to Captain Universe. After being exposed to gamma-irradiated pinchers in a battle with the Hulk, Peter Parker transforms into a spider Hulk in Web of Spider-Man number 70. After an intense battle with the newly formed and interdimensionally enhanced Enhanced Sinister Six, Spider-Man is seriously injured, but in Spider-Man 21 in 1992, thanks to interdimensional help, he's given cyber-robotic enhancements which accelerate his healing factor. In Spider-Man 25 in 1992, in a battle with Arcade and a team-up with Excalibur, Spider-Man is temporarily imbued with the power of the Phoenix and becomes Spider-Phoenix. In Spectacular Spider-Man 206 in 1993, Peter Parker's mask is yet again destroyed, but this time, in an attempt to preserve his secret identity, he borrows black cats, and it looks just terrible. Built from an actual modified webbing formula of Peter Parker's own design, the Spider Steel or Steel Spider was created in 1993 in Web of Spider-Man number 100. I think it lasted two pages? In an intense battle with Typhoid Mary in Spectacular Spider-Man number 214 in 1994, Spider-Man's mask is ripped yet again, and this time he uses tattered remains to make a ninja mask out of it. Here's where things get a little bit dicey. In Web of Spider-Man number 118 in 1994, during the Clone Saga, thought to be clone Ben Riley seemingly returned from the dead and donned a makeshift Spider-Man costume, which was called the Scarlet Spider. The reason it works in this list is because not only has Peter Parker himself worn this costume to cause deception, but there was a little bit of confusion back then about who the real Peter Parker actually was. In Spider-Man 58 in 1995, Peter Parker was in a hurry and, not having any time to change costumes, threw on the black costume Spider-Man mask, gloves, and just his regular old Peter Parker clothes and jacket. In Spider-Man Funeral for an Octopus number 2 in 1995, Peter Parker dons Dr. Octopus' famous technology to quell a supervillain uprising. In Sensational Spider-Man number 0 in 1996, Ben Riley is revealed to be the real Peter Parker and, as such, creates a new Spider-Man costume for a new era. 
During Ben Reilly's run as Spider-Man in Amazing Spider-Man 410 in 1996, he comes in too close proximity to the Carnage symbiote and becomes Spider-Carnage. In Amazing Spider-Man 425 in 1997, the newly returned Peter Parker teams up with X-Man to battle Electro, and as such requires an Electro-proof suit to fight him. Those webs are more than a means of conveyance in Peter Parker Spider-Man number 89 in 1998, when his mask is destroyed and requires a new one made entirely from webbing. This one's a little bit of a cheat, but in Peter Parker Spider-Man number 90 in 1998, Spider-Man enters the negative zone, and while in the negative zone, his costume is inverted, and kind of causes a really neat-looking effect. Thanks to a $5 million bounty on his head, Spider-Man had to go into hiding during Identity Crisis in 1998. But great power still commands great responsibility, and Spider-Man needed to go into action, but not as Spider-Man. In Spectacular Spider-Man number 256, Spider-Man dons a familiar paper bag over his head and fights crime as the bombastic bag man. In Amazing Spider-Man 433, he donned a green hoodie in order to battle Mr. Hyde. I'm sorry, a green hoodie, that's it? In Amazing Spider-Man 434, we met the first member of the Slingers, known as Ricochet. In Sensational Spider-Man 28, we met the iteration of Spider-Man's costume known as the Hornet. In Peter Parker Spider-Man number 91, we met Dusk, an all-black affair. And in Spectacular Spider-Man 257, we saw Spider-Man's alternate costume known as Prodigy. Okay, now I know I said no alternate realities, but to be fair, in House of M in 2005, Wanda Maximoff turns the regular 616 Marvel Universe into the House of M Universe. So I think it's fair to say that the House of M Spider-Man costume first appeared in House of M Spider-Man number one. In the lead up to Civil War in 2006, in Amazing Spider-Man 529, we debuted Tony Stark's custom iron spider suit for Spider-Man to wear during the Civil War. During Spider-Man Big Time, Peter Parker had access to a lab, funds, and lots of privacy. He took advantage of all three to create many different iterations of the Spider-Man suit, including three different stealth suits. One of which was, shall we say, commandeered by his newly cured clone, Kane. Most of them appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 650 in 2010. In Amazing Spider-Man 656, in the No One Dies story arc, Spider-Man had to battle an emotionless villain known as Massacre, and had to don a bulletproof suit to do it. In Amazing Spider-Man 682 in 2012, during Ends of the Earth, Spider-Man debuted an anti-sinister six armor, which he used to battle every single member, including Doc Ock. In 2013, when Dr. Octopus took over Peter Parker's consciousness in Superior Spider-Man number one, we saw the first iteration of the Superior Spider-Man uniform. But it wasn't until Superior Spider-Man number 14 that we saw the second iteration, which included mechanical arms and a design that looks suspiciously like an Alex Ross movie design from long ago. After Peter Parker regained control, he went back to those classic red and blues, but in 2015, we saw the debut of an all-new, all-different Amazing Spider-Man in Amazing Spider-Man number one. Now, this list doesn't even begin to cover the alternate realities and different evil Spider-Men and symbiotes that we could possibly cover, but I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a lot to choose from, even from this list alone. Let us know what your favorite costume was in the comment section down below. And be sure to check us out over on ComicPop.net. But don't forget to like and subscribe and check out more stuff from Comics Explained.